You didn't have the most glamorous upbringing, did you? <laughs> no, no. There were many wonderful things about it, but no, it was a, it was a very typical West Riding working class childhood, and it was fine. You know, people these days ask me when they, you know, when they meet me now and see where and how I live. Oh, you know, it, it must have seemed awful when you were growing up. Well, of course, you didn't know anything different, and everybody else was was living in the same way, uh, hand to mouth. You know. Uh, my mother and me hiding behind the sofa when the rent collector came to the door. I mean, <laughs> literally, because we we didn't have the rent. Um, but but it, I can only say the last since I came back, the last six seven years have been the best years of my life. The last decade has been a fantastic decade. The seventy part is is the least um, attractive to me. I don't know how that came about. It's a complete mystery to me. I, I, 70 doesn't sound like me. It doesn't feel like me. I, I feel as though I ought to be behaving a little bit more uh, in an adult fashion than I, I usually do. I mean, there I was at Silverstone yesterday afternoon screaming in the mechanics pits, in, 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 in the uh, McLaren pits. And, um, but, and yes, yes, I did take a trip to the palace just about a month ago. All these things have um, have come together at a time that take my breath away because I never expected these honors to come my way. Um, they were things that happened to other people, not to me. And so the last, the success of the last six years of deciding to say no to Hollywood and yes to British theatre, not knowing whether I would be taken back into the fold of, of the British theatrical world or not. You know, I felt the first thing I did here was Anthony and Cleopatra at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I remember standing behind the the scenery on the press night, writing the reviews in my head, which were basically along the line of, who does he think he is, you know? <laughs> but it hasn't turned, hasn't turned out like that, and, um, I, 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 and so, you know, I'm I'm a bit dazed by it all, frankly, but delighted, n n nevertheless, delighted, and delighted because this has been brought up once or twice on the the distinction that some people feel, and certainly I do, that this has brought to my local community and to the place where I grew up and how I grew up and those people who were significant in putting my feet on the path that has led to where I am today. You've had an exceptional career, and it goes from strength to strength. When we look at the different parts of your life, from Star Trek through X-Men to Shakespeare, they're all so different. You make it sound very humble. Oh, I was lucky to get this, and I thought I'd try the West End again. I mean, they were never going to say no. You're an international megastar. Are you really this humble? <laughs> Alex, it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> uh, you know, yesterday afternoon, on the starting grid at Silverstone, I was talking to a member of the royal family and <laughs> and and just at that moment uh, um, uh, Lewis Hamilton caught my eye and his face lit up and I had to say excuse me sir I, I just, <laughs> and and the thrill I felt at standing there on the grid he was already in his race suit shaking hands with Lewis Hamilton I know I felt like a kid again so it's not any kind of false modesty I do feel lucky many times over from the very, very beginning. And uh, and I've also, I've taken some risks as well. I've chosen to do things. There were people who thought I should not have gone to Hollywood and done Star Trek. There were people who thought I was letting down my theater background. People in Hollywood were, were amazed and dismayed that I said I was giving up that life and coming back to England. Um, the whole business of taking on the job of chancellor here. They've all, in a sense, been gambles. But without risk, without having a shot at something, not knowing whether you can pull it off or not, I find that stimulating, and I find, in a strange kind of way, that's what keeps me feeling youthful and certainly not feeling 70. I was 40 a couple of weeks ago, is, is how it feels. You're just acting 70. Well, I'm not, you see. 
You know, somebody who was 70 wouldn't have been behaving like a kid on the starting grid at Silverstone yesterday. Um, and uh, the other day I was, at a, I was doing a signing thing for Star Trek. And my son, who was there with me, who's also done Star Trek, came over to me and said, Dad, there's the whole of the Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> 1970 squad over there signing. <laughs> what? I abandoned what I was doing. I mean, I know. And I'm shaking hands with, with, with Bob Wilson, you know. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, and it's just fantastic for me. So that is how I view life. I get a great kick out of it. Out of, I get a great kick out of everything I do. And I wander around saying to myself, Patrick, can you really believe this is happening? And um, it's, it, it, feels, it feels right for me. When you see yourself in the old days on the TV, is it you or is that like your son or some other actor? We didn't know when Star Trek began, really, w w what was going to happen. And I was the last member of, of our company, of the crew, to... Um, to wake up to the fact that we were a hit. I was in denial about it for a long time. And um, uh, I do remember I bought, <laughs> at the start of the second season, or maybe it was halfway through the first season, I, I bought a new car. <clears throat> I bought a Honda. And and I remember Jonathan Frakes, who played Commander Reich in Star Trek, saying to me, Patrick, you have a poverty mentality. You bought a Honda, perfectly good car. But you know, you could have <laughs> perhaps bought something a bit fancier. And I was thrilled with my Honda. I was really pleased. It was only the second new car I'd ever owned. Do you think you've made it yet? Well, what's just happened, this trip to the palace and, the, and, and meeting the queen, that has given me pause for thought and made me reflect on the fact that an acknowledgement has been made, some notice has been taken of what I've done more seriously than I ever considered it. And that it perhaps does um, count as, a, as a, um, an illustration of something that, just like my poverty uh, mentality, I was in denial about, you know, that, I, I, that a, certain, a certain place in the life of British theatre. And that means so much more to me than having a place in Hollywood. It, because it's all I ever wanted to do. When I was 15, 16, I had no ambitions to work in Hollywood. I had no ambitions to be a movie star in front of film cameras working with other big stars. All I wanted to do was be on a stage, if possible, speaking blank verse. If not, the next possible best thing. And that's what the last few years have been like. And the, my level of satisfaction is profound and the pleasure I get out of my work only gets greater year by year. I love my job now more than I ever have done. And I found I've just finished doing a play in Chichester in which I actually played William Shakespeare in this play. And I suddenly realized, Patrick, you've got a, inside you, there's a quality of peace, of quiet, even in the middle of, you know, extremely emotional scenes that wasn't there before. So something has obviously changed and it's to do with confidence, self-assurance and and a belief that, you know, all actors have this thing. We always, all of us, we all say that we have this fear we're going to be found out, you know. You'll go on to do a performance and somebody will say, oh, come on, you can't fool us with that. And um, that feeling, I think, is gone that I might get found out. It's interesting, when I look at people like you and Serena McKellen and Simon Callow, you're really hard workers. You could have a much easier life. Turning up at a theatre eight times a week isn't easy, is it? You know, Ian is still doing it. The, the, you, you mentioned Simon and, and Ian and myself and, and, and Ronald Pickup. We were doing Waiting for Godot. Uh, we did it for 22 weeks and I was worn out. I was exhausted. Ian McKellen is still playing that role in the same production with another cast of actors. And uh, I love turning up to do a show. I, I still get a thrill out of it. Sir Ian, on the other hand, he would live there in the theatre, I think, if they'd let him. He used to come in at half past three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and he'd have his afternoon sleep in the theatre, then wake up and do the show, while as I would have it at home and come in for the performance. It's a... To know that every night 
you are going out in front of an audience who want to be there and are excited to be there. And some of them for the first time, given what Syrian and, and I have done, you know, the, the X-Men and Star Trek and, and Lord of the Rings, people come to see Gandalf, they come to see Captain Picard, they come to see Magneto and Professor Xavier. <laughs> but instead, what they get is Sam Beckett and William Shakespeare and Edward Bond. And um, so that that's thrilling too, to know that those people are there. But that I can tell a story differently every night in front of a live audience knowing that that will be a one-off unique experience it's such a privilege when you come back to murfield are you that little boy hiding behind the couch with your mom trying to avoid the rent man do you does it take you back to a place that you were there 70 years ago well funnily enough i was back in murfield on saturday um and i can tell you why i was there i went to visit um the Father Superior um, and uh, Father Prior and the brothers at the Community of the Resurrection, which is an Anglican monastery, an important Anglican monastery, which is in Murfield and was what Murfield was once upon a time most famous for. Uh, it's probably got a little bit of competition now because I've agreed to be part of a campaign to raise some funds because the, the, the church is badly in need of restoration. I first appeared on a public stage at the age of eight or nine in the Quarry Theatre at the Community of the Resurrection. And I said to them, if only because of that connection, I'm very, very happy to be part of this. But before I went over to Batty Ford to the, um, to the community, I, I just took a little drive around my neighborhood and it gave me goosebumps. Um, I went past the house I was born in and lived in for 15 years, a one up, one down house in a yard and um, what impressed me most about it, I've been back before but not for a long time, was not that um, everything seemed more ordinary or duller. What was extraordinary was that distances, measurements have shrunk. I always thought the street I lived on was a long steep street. It's not. It's very short and it's not that steep at all. But in reflection it seemed to be. Um, my life back then is very vivid to me, and I have now started writing a little bit about it, about what it was like. And um, so I shall be living back there in my head a great deal, I think, in the, in the coming few years. And that sound you hear in the background is the Vice Chancellor closing the door, because he needs me, Alex. I'm going to let you go. Very finally, congratulations on being you. You've brought so much pleasure to so many different generations, and giving back here at the University of Huddersfield really just sums you up, really, that you care. Um, with funding in the news and all of this stuff, you'll never lose that passion, will you, for the youth and giving them a chance? I got a chance. I got my break at Murfield Secondary Modern School. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been at that school with that particular English teacher. And so if I can throw in any way opportunities like that in the way of young people, particularly those young people which this university seeks out and encourages, who, whose families and backgrounds does not prepare them to expect higher education. And we have a significant number here in Huddersfield. That makes me especially gratified. Very finally, your tip on looking like you when I get to 70. What's the key? You, you know, I remember they used to ask this question on the Wilfred Pickles, have a go show, <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> have a go, Joe. Um, I, 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 I cannot tell you except that I have loved my job for 52 years, loved it. And I think I was very lucky in going to California when I did, because Californians do know how to take care of themselves. And I got into that culture of sensible eating, um, uh, uh, exercise, regular medical checkups, looking after myself. And that has stayed with me ever since 1987 when I went. And I think that was very significant. And, and you know, there's a lot to be said for being happy if you can find it. Sir Patrick Stewart, thank you very much for talking to me. It's a great honour and uh, congratulations on all the work you do here in West Yorkshire and especially for the University of Huddersfield. Nice to talk to you. Thank you.